nice if you had a little bit of a method that you could actually sit down and do a debrief with them. Now, the fundamental debrief is really simple. It's what went well, what did I learn, and what's the next step. But I want to walk you through how in my mind I organize myself and how I take notes and how I, I'm there for somebody who's doing a presentation so I can then give them constructive feedback. So the first thing is, um, by the way, if you have notes uh, or something to take notes on, I would recommend you write these down. Uh, it might come in handy someday for you. Everybody good? Does anybody need a pen and paper? Is that going to be hard to see because it's too light in the back? Can you see this? I can't see it. Do you have a black? It doesn't show up on the video. I'll switch. Okay. The first thing whenever you're coaching anybody is you need to get what? Permission. Get permission. So later on, after I go through this process, I'm going to offer feedback to any of you who want it. I, not everyone, but I, I, may, I have notes from the last two Saturday trainings. And if you want feedback, I'm going to ask for permission. And if you give it to me, then I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. So step one is get permission. <laughs> because there's nothing more than unwelcome advice and unwelcome coaching that would turn somebody off. Would you agree? Uh, number two is while you're, while you're taking notes, this is how I try to show up. While I'm in the audience, when I'm taking notes, number one, I want to be fully present. I want to be 100% there. What I want to do is I want to keep my mind open. I want to be a learner, not a judger. Number two, Number two, part of number two is I'm looking for what they did well. I'm looking for what they did well. I'm looking for that one or two things that they did really well. One, two, or three things they did well. I'm taking notes. And I'll talk about how I take notes later. And the last thing I do, this is really hard to put words to, but I'll just try to describe it and maybe you guys could get the, get the concept. I, I call it holding space. You heard that term before, holding space? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Yeah. What does holding space mean? Just keep your mind open. Um, just listen, let it come in so that you are not judging and you're not thinking about other things. So let something new come yeah, it's being very, yes, absolutely. It's being receptive, being open. And the other thing I actually visualize myself doing is I visualize myself sending them positive energy. Mm -hmm. I see, I, I, I feel in my heart that I'm like sending them encouragement in, in my eyes, in my smile. You do that. You I'm do just that. sending them encouragement. Have you guys noticed? Yes. yes. Oh, good. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Flip, flip side, when you're that person and you've noticed me sending you energy, or some, you, it's not always me, sometimes it's the person in the back of the room, right? Mm -hmm. How many of you feel that you just thrive on that energy just it keeps you going through the difficult parts, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I want us to, as a team to remember that when somebody's up on stage, it's not that difficult oftentimes to present to strangers, but it's oftentimes very difficult to present to your peers mm -hmm. and to people that you respect and you're looking up to your... Your mentor and your mentor sitting there taking notes with a frown on their face. Oh shit, I'm screwing up really bad. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you could really hold that space for them, that loving space, sending them energy, sending them encouragement, sending that, that beam of light through your eyes, it makes a huge difference on their performance. And it'll put you in a place where afterwards, when you sit down with them, they're going to be much more receptive to your feedback because they won't come in like all scared and sheepish and ready to get beat up from you. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. Well, and Greg, with that too, it helps to see that person smiling because most people's concentrating face looks um, sometimes miserable or unhappy, but they're super concentrating, but they're just not showing you in their face. So there's one face that's beaming to you, you're like, okay, I'm making one person happy. Yeah. 
and most of them are fine. Sure. With their face and their leg. Yeah. Good point. Does everyone relate to that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And good. I look for the person who's going like, yeah. 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 You feed off of them. They keep you alive. Yeah. It's like your it's energy. All right. Number three. The third thing is when I'm taking notes. What I do is I put the date, I put the event, and I put the names here. And I draw a line, and you don't have to do it this way, but this is what works for me. I'll draw a line down the middle, and so this would be maybe speaker number one, and this would be speaker number two, and I put their name here. And on this side, these are the things that they did well, and on this side, these are the things they need to work on. And so I'm capturing both, but I'm really making sure that I'm consciously attempting to find two or three things that they did really, really well. Because there's nothing more than just getting negative feedback, negative feedback, here's what you do, here's what you did wrong, here's what you need to improve, here's what you did wrong. So I really want to make sure that there's a balance here on both sides of this equation. Because it's easy to find what people aren't doing perfect, right? And what I need to do also in my mind is I'm writing down things that they could do better. I don't want to nitpick the little things. I want to work on the things that are going to make the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. The simple, easy to adjust things. Okay? So, as I'm taking notes, um, and then I have my notes and I have my summary. The next thing is if you can get together right away, you want to probably pay attention to this next one, number four, is timing. For example, if you're going to give somebody feedback, you want to make sure that not only do you have permission, but the time is right. In other words, if they have to run off and they weren't going to be present, or if they've got their guests with them and they don't want to have the conversation in front of somebody that you know is not a coach or whatever, be aware of the timing. Because sometimes, I remember um, a couple of months ago, I, I read some wrote notes that I wanted to give to Crystal, but Timing wasn't good. I said, you know what, I'm just going to call her later. And I called her in the afternoon, a couple hours after the event was over. And I said, hey, Crystal, are you open to some feedback? And she goes, yeah, I'd love to hear it. And I go, great. I got a couple things that I wanted to talk about. And I gave her the feedback. I went through the process, and she was like, oh, that's great. I appreciate it. But I think that if I had approached her right then and there while the pressure was on and the heat was on, it might not have been as easily received. So um, it's like emotional intelligence for giving feedback. Paying attention to the yeah. environment. Yeah, good, good point. So, you know, when you do actually now get to the feedback, you're at, now at, you're, at, you're giving the feedback, you do want to follow that number, what went well, what did you learn, and what's your next step. And what I'll do is I'll start with them. I'll let them ans answer those questions. What did you think went well? And then I'll contribute. And then I say, what did you learn? And I'll say, well, here's what I, here's what some of the notes that I took. And I'll go through the notes. And I do want to start with the what went well, and I want to finish with the next step, which is not only offering to have them do it again if they want to, or offering to get together with them to practice, but actually making sure that they know that, there's, that the, this is not the end of the, the journey. This is just step one in a series of you going to the gym to master this skill, and it's not going to stop here. So I really do want to schedule a next step, whether it's a next appointment, a next presentation, a next uh, role play, or whatever. I want to make sure that they feel like I'm going to be with them as they're continuing to learn. So if you're open to it, I have a handful of people here that um, I took some notes on, and they're a little bit old, and they're been several months now, some of them. So you're complete. I'm complete with this part, yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Greg. Great job. That's, that's